I think that I can be I can talk myself out of everything. I'm very I have I have lots of fears. <laughs> um I think that my top two challenges were one fear of um of putting myself out there. What does that mean um, to put yourself out there? Can you a lot of people use that um, phrase, but I, I I'd like to know what you mean by that. Well, I think um I think I sort of all totally always question how good I am as an artist for a start. Um, so I use Instagram and I put my work out there, but um, and I get pretty good feedback most of the time. But it, it does worry me that it's never going to be good enough, and and I'm not good enough, and I'm not. Uh, I don't stand out enough as an artist. So that's one big thing, fear. Um, another thing is, I think I've got a nice, secure job. Why would I want to upset the apple cart? <laughs> and, you, so, and by the way, you don't have to. to. No, I know, I know. And it's but those were the two fears I think that I had. A lot of people feel conflicted that they have to give up their their stable day job or stable business to become an artist. That's just not true. There's plenty of people in our program who choose to make art and sell art part time. And um, that's okay. <laughs> I think it's very true that a lot of artists feel like their, their art's not good enough. But in the second breath or the first breath is I'm not good enough. Like the two are linked together. Yeah. Definitely. And they're linked, aren't they? Because uh, when you put your art out into the world, it's like you're putting your heart, you're putting everything about you into the world because they're so connected. So right. I think you like make yourself, or I, f I feel like I make myself vulnerable by doing that. Um, and so, you know, that is a big fear, I think. That's big, and I, I think it's sort of what has held me back before. But there is power in vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. And I've like been doing this, I think, just less than a couple of weeks now. And already I can feel myself starting to open up and just, you know, like it was brilliant meeting sort of my study partners because I'm quite a shy person and just reaching out to them and getting so, so much amazing sort of feedback back. That's really helped. So already that's me being really brave. And then sort of, you know, already I feel that I'm opening that, that communication out. But I'm starting to listen to myself as well. You know, I'm, I know that I will know when the time's right. I'm starting to have more faith in, in, in what I'm, you know, what I'm telling myself, maybe subconsciously. Good. Um, a really useful exercise I found was when you'd said about asking people who had bought your work before, and um, what they thought of it or why they bought it and that was so useful I couldn't believe how useful that was because they came out of things that I just hadn't even thought about so that has helped me with my focus because they were they were absolutely right the things that they said I was like oh my goodness I didn't even notice that myself so that was brilliant uh, I found yeah. that so useful and that was even before I joined the course that was on your taster and I did uh, that yeah that was one of the things that I just thought I've got to do this course because you made me think about things that I hadn't, I just hadn't thought about in terms of, of being an artist. So things that were quite disconnected, they just suddenly came straight together. You wrote, just want to say how inspired I feel today. I had some great study partner sessions over the last few days. Thank you, Linda Mallison Jones and Leslie Ann Cottle. And this evening I watched Anne Elizabeth Ray and Angela Wright's web chat. Angela is also from England. So inspiring. Thank you for all for making me feel that there's someone else for me out there starting to feel the fluttering of excitement and joy that I haven't felt for years. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing. It was, it was great. It was I think I'd put on um on our Facebook page, hi, I'm new. And I thought I just put myself out there straight away. Um, and I got so much response. It was amazing. Um, and people are just so welcoming. And, and I know you have that sort of zero tolerance, which is brilliant, because I didn't 
feel at any point that there was anybody going to be sort of you know mean or anything everybody was so lovely um, and straight away I had people saying oh do you want to be my study partner so I you know that was great so um, I just chose sort of said asked people that were in my sort of time zone if they would would, would be willing and everybody came back really positive so my first first one was with Leslie and um and she was great and we were in the same time zone so <laughs> it was great um and it was it was I thought it would be really awkward but it wasn't at all it was great and we just talked about where we were in a program and she was sort of re, re, re going over things and so yeah it was it was great it was lovely it was much so, easier than I ever thought it would be yeah and you're and you're shy <laughs> yeah and I'm really shy you're in course one. So course one is called accomplishing. So it's about accomplishing. And the reason we start with accomplishing is because it, our success is 80% psych our psychology and 20% our strategy. But I can present you with all sorts of useful strategies to sell your art. But if your psychology is not receptive, it will block your success. So that's why we have to start with that. And we do exercises on on fears and so can you describe to me a little bit about what you felt you've experienced a bit of a shift in already and I know you're only in the first course but what's what's shifted already and um, straight away I could feel that I'm opening up so I had to the first first thing was um, was examining fears and and you know what my successes and failures were and though some of those things I hadn't thought about for years you know you sort of tend to put them back and and I was sort of I just I just blurted everything out I just you know it's like sick on the paper good and I just, just got, it, got it all out and and then I realized that I worked for it really methodically as well so I'd put something down and then I would would literally sleep on it and then I was, I was percolating away and then the next day I'd come back and and I realized that a lot of my fears I could totally um you know reason away it wasn't all you know there wasn't there just wasn't um there, there weren't really fears they were just me being self-limiting so i think straight away my psychology is starting to shift i feel like i am sort of opening up um i am managing instead of worrying about things and just going over and over them and them not making any sense to me anymore i'm starting to be able to reason reason them and that's been such a breath of fresh air. And I really have started to feel like those inklings of excitement and joy that, that I haven't literally haven't had for a long time. Oh. And feel that it's it's really possible. That we're told all the time for throughout childhood by everybody, you're told, get a proper job, get a proper job, be sensible. Um but if that proper job isn't making you fulfilled, then it's not really worth anything. Um, right. And the other thing is it's very dangerous in is black and white thinking and big generalization. Yeah. Right. So that if you is. say, I'm scared of money, well, what specifically are you scared about? Right? What specifically is it? And you break that down. Um and then generalizations like you know, or, or, or black and white thinking, like I have to be an artist full time in order to be successful. Well, that's not true. I mean, you know, it's just not true. There's plenty of people who decide to do it. Like I did, I started to, I decided to do part time and then I moved to full time. And now I'm back to part time because I'm part time artist, part time instructor in the, for my students. Right. So this is no big deal to me. I, I enjoy, doing both and you get to do whatever you want to do. But I think what you hit on is really key is fulfillment, right? Really being fulfilled. So you, yeah. ha you definitely have got to have enough money to take care of your needs and, and uh, be comfortable enough. But if you have a pile of money and you're not fulfilled, then that won't do you any good. So it's a constant balance. So do it. Definitely do it. Within like, well, it's been about eight days, I think, for me that I've I've done it, and already I can just feel something happening. It's 
there, it's like there's a power in it that I can't really describe yet. And maybe it's too early for me to describe, but I can feel weirdly, like almost like a spiritual thing. Since I started, so many nice things have happened to me. Um, and I think it's from me, one, gaining confidence because I sort of, I'm on, I feel like I'm on track. Um, uh, it's it, the process. I'm quite, I think I rush into things as well, as well. And the, the actual process of this is making me be really slowed down and reason things rather than me just going, well, ah, you know, I've got to get out of my job. I need to, you know, so this is sort of slowing me down and making me really think about stuff. And because of that, I'm opening up and already I can feel things happening. Just my confidence level is already going up. Wow. So do it, definitely.